Good morning, SCC families, and welcome back to another family worship here at Seattle Community Church. My name is Esther Bullock, and I'm the Children's Ministry Director here at SCC. And I am so excited to welcome you guys to another family worship here with us today. It is so great to see you all, and I can't wait to see what God has in store for us with this week's family worship. Now, this month we are talking all about responsibility, and we're finding out how we can put it into practice every single day. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. When we live life with responsibility, we start to see the world the way that God sees it. When we do what is expected of us, then we also start to build trust with the people around us. Today's story is one that Jesus told his friends in order to help them understand something important. You see, Jesus often told stories when he wanted to explain something to the people who followed him. Now these stories were called parables and they took place in everyday situations so that people could understand God's truth for themselves. Now today our friend Erica is back once again to help us introduce our Bible story and this special parable that Jesus tells in the Bible. I'm Erica. Who's up for a game of brain drain? The rules to this one are very simple. Use every single part of your brain to get your team to guess the answers to the questions. You're my team! So you've got to guess the answers. That's your responsibility. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. Okay, this first question is knowledge based. So you're going to need to use this part of your brain you use for intense thinking. What is four plus four plus eight plus eight minus 16? You have 10 seconds, go! Okay, time's up! Here's the answer, four, plus four, plus eight, plus eight, minus 16 is eight. Did you get the answer? Did you get the answer? Huh? Who got it? I'm gonna say you did. Next question. Okay, so this is an artistic question. You'll need that creative part of your brain right here. Using the enclosed clay and drawing pad, Get your team to guess the following phrase. Okay, I can do this. Go! Do you get it? It's a dime a dozen. A dime, a dozen, a dime, a dozen. That's the phrase that means something is so common you can pretty much find it anywhere. It's a dime a dozen. We're rich, I tell you. We're rich. Oh. Let's do another one. Oh, this one's a performance card. I like this one. It uses that part of your brain that gives you courage. Right here to act on stage or sing. Here goes. Get your team to guess the following animal. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'll just look silly. In today's story, we'll learn about a boss who put three servants in charge of bags of gold. Will the servants do something with what they're given or waste their opportunity? I'm not going to act like that animal. Stop wondering. Stop! The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 
through 30. When Jesus wanted to share the truth with the people that followed him, he often would tell a parable, a story. Here is what the kingdom of heaven will be like. These parables used everyday situations to help people think and understand God's truth for themselves. One day in Jerusalem, Jesus wanted to share a story with his followers. If he told that same story today, it might sound something like this. There once was a man who created the world's most amazing energy bar. Just one bite and I feel like I could leap tall buildings in a single bound. What is even in these? If I told you, I'd have to leave you stranded on top of Mount Everest. The man did such a good job of selling the energy bars, he soon became wealthy. Then one day, he got on a Zoom call with three of his top employees. Zane, Ren, Murray. Yes, sir. Right here. Murray. Says he's here. I don't hear him. Start your audio, Murray. Oh, hey, just, you know, I was finishing the movie. I've called you together for an important purpose. I'm going offline. You're what? A completely scree free. I'm going to travel the world for a while. Hike Everest, cross the Sahara, dive down to the Mariana Trench, miles beneath the ocean, all fueled by my energy bar, of course. Uh, dude, that is far out. Literally. The rich man had carefully studied his employees and knew what they could handle. While I'm gone, I'm leaving you in charge of my money. Zane, I'm sending you an encrypted key to access my gold account with 5,000 credits. Oh, excellent. Ren, here's an encrypted key to access my silver account with 2,000 credits. I'm on it. Murray, check your inbox for an encrypted key to my bronze account with 1,000 credits. That's it? That's it. I'm going off the grid. Immediately, Zane accessed the money from the gold account and put that money to work. He hired scientists and designers to create a suction shoe that would keep a rock climber from falling. I call it the fly shoe. The fly shoe sold as nearly as fast as the energy bar. Zane soon made his money back and more. Ren, meanwhile, made excellent use of the money in the silver account. What does every adventurer need besides fuel and shoes? A friend. So Ren invented a robotic hamster that could travel anywhere an explorer can go, from the highest of mountains to the deepest ocean trench. Soon, Robotic adventure hamsters sold as fast as toilet papers. So that left only Murray, who sat looking at the bronze account on his computer screen. Only 1,000? It's like he expects me to mess it up. Well, I'll show him, ha! Huh. So Murray took the money out in coins and stashed them in a giant bag. Then late one night, dug a hole in his backyard, stashed the bag inside, and covered it right back up. Great. Now all I have to do is go back inside and watch Netflix. After a very long time, the rich man returned from the wilds. Ah, electricity, internet. I have returned to the grid. Please accept my meeting invite. Zane and Ren hopped on the call immediately. Murray took a little longer. Start, Start your audio, Murray. Oh yeah. There it is. I'm excited to see how you've handled my money, Zane. Through sales of the fly shoe, I've added 5,000 more credits to your gold account. Well done, good and faithful employee. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share my happiness. Now, Ren. My adorable traveling robotic hamsters have earned 2,000 more credits for your silver account. Well done, good and faithful employee. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share my happiness. <laughs> so, uh, Murray. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, hold on. Murray reached down and held up a muddy sack. He spilled the coins across the desk. How? much is that? 1,000 credits. That's what I gave you. Yeah. Yeah, well, I knew you're a tough businessman. You, you make money even where you haven't worked for it. I didn't want you getting mad, so I just buried the money. See? It's all safe. Murray offered a weak smile, but instead of smiling back, the rich man went red in the face. You lazy man. 
If you knew I can make money even when I haven't worked for it, you should have at least kept my money in the bank where it would have earned a little bit. Uh, sure. The rich man turned to his personal assistant and ordered. Take Murray's credits and give them to Zane, who already has 10,000 credits. Oh, and take Murray off my payroll immediately. The message of Jesus' story was clear. If you are responsible for what you were given, you'll be given more. If you wasted it, you end up with nothing. When Jesus told the story about the boss and the three servants, I think it was really a story about you and me. God is like the boss in the story, and we're the ones he entrusted with bags of gold. Okay, so maybe God didn't actually give you a bunch of gold, but you have definitely been given something. Each and every one of us has been uniquely created. We've been given unique talents and abilities. We use different parts of our brain. We are definitely not a dime a dozen. So it's up to us to actually use what God has trusted us with. We can't just bury it in the ground and let it go to waste. And I think it's even better if we use what he's given us to make a difference in the world, to love God and to love other people. So here's the rule for life to remember today. Make the most of what you've been given. So if you've got a talent for singing, <laughs> then sing out loud and strong. If you're good at intense thinking, then think about how you can make the world a better place. And if you happen to have the talent for acting like a wild animal, then let it out of its cage every once in a while, even if it makes you look silly. Did you get it? You're right. It was a zebra. See you next time. I'm kidding. It was an elephant. A really good elephant, too. I wonder what part of the brain that was. This one? This one? This one? This one? Definitely this one. The boss in Jesus' story gave each of his servants a gift, and he expected them to be responsible with it while he was gone. Now, it didn't matter how much or how little that each servant had been given. What mattered is what they did with it. And that's what we need to remember today. In fact, it's a great rule for life. We need to make the most of what God has given us. Make the most of what you've been given. All right, now take a second to think about all the things that God has given you. Maybe he's given you a talent, like you're a great artist or you're really good at sports. Maybe he's given you friends and family who love you. And every day you can choose how you treat them. In every situation, let's make the most of what we have. Let's pray and ask God to help us do just that. Join me. God, please help us to make the most of what you have given us. We don't want to be lazy. We don't want to live in fear. We want to work hard and be responsible. Please help us use the things that you've given us to make a difference in the lives of other people. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Now the story that Jesus told his disciples reminds me of this month's memory verse. Luke 16, 10, Jesus says, suppose you can be trusted with something very little, then you can also be trusted with something very large. That was definitely true in today's story. Two of the servants were responsible with the money that their boss gave them. They worked hard and they made even more money. And the boss rewarded them for their good work. But the servant who did nothing and who buried his gold, he was sent away. Well, God is like the boss in the story. And we are like those that he has entrusted with bags of gold. Now, like the first two servants, we can make the wise choice 
we can be responsible and make the most of what God has given us. And that's what we need to remember today. Make the most of what you've been given. If you think about it, Jesus made the most of his time with people. He showed love to everyone and he helped them understand what's most important to God. You see, everything that we have comes from God. And he wants us to make the most of what he has given us. Whether it's your allowance or your talents or your friendships, God wants us to make the most of it all. He wants us to use what we have in order to show his love to the people around us. In our family worship time today, let's talk about what God has given us and how we can make the most of it. I've put together three activities to help you do just that, and you can find them along with all of our other resources in our OneDrive at tinyurl.com slash scc family worship. I hope these resources are helpful to you as a family, not only to grow closer to God, but also to grow closer to one another. And I hope this also helps you feel closer to us as a community as a whole, as we continue to worship together, even when we're apart. I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.